Ήταν τόσο σκληροί. Ήταν το, δηλαδή δεν καταλάβαιναν από τα παρακάλια σας, από αυτά που τους Μα, λέγατε. Παιδιά, παιδιά μα έδεσαν και από εκείνο το σημείο και μετά δεν τους είχαμε πει ήδη που είναι τα χρήματα. Ο, δεν μπορώ, ο, δεν ξέρω. Όταν συνειδητοποιείς... Εσύ κατάφερες και πήρες τηλέφωνο. Όταν συνειδητοποιείς ότι η γυναίκα σου δεν έσχεται σε ζωή. Ε, με, όταν μέλησαν οι αστυνομοί. Όταν ήρθαν οι αστυνομοί μέσα και μέλησαν και έβγαλαν το, από το κεφάλι μου τα... This case takes us to Glykinera, just outside of central Athens in Greece. 20-year-old Caroline Crouch lived there with her 33-year-old husband, Babis, and their 11-month-old daughter, Lydia. Caroline was described as a compassionate and caring but feisty person, holding a black belt in kickboxing. She adored animals and had adopted a husky puppy from the Marathon Animal Association when he was just two months old. She named him Roxy, and as well as Roxy, the couple also had four cats. Caroline had moved to Greece from England, aged just eight years old, and had spent over half her life there. When she was 15, she met her future husband, Charalambos, known as Babis, on the island of Alanissos, where she had lived since her childhood. Babis's parents owned a holiday home there, which he would visit. Although he was 12 years her senior, the pair eventually began dating. They lived together in a house in Glykinera, and in 2018, the couple made plans to marry. Babis was a successful and well-respected helicopter pilot, and Caroline had studied statistics at university, with hopes to go to catering school one day. A few weeks after the couple's wedding, Caroline found out she was pregnant, but tragically, just three months later, she would miscarry. But after this, she went on to give birth to a baby girl, whom the couple named Lydia. Caroline's world revolved around Lydia, and everyone that knew Caroline said that being a mother was absolutely everything to her. Police received a phone call from a house in Glykinera, which would turn out to be the home of Babis and Caroline. The officers were told a story so horrifying that even the most senior and tenured of detectives were left in complete and utter shock. When police arrived at the home in question, they were confronted by a horrendous scene. Caroline's beloved husky Roxy was dead and had been hung by his lead on the stairs. Baby Lydia was screaming and hitting her mother, trying to wake her up. But tragically, 20-year-old Caroline Crouch was already dead. Her husband Babis had been handcuffed and restrained. He had tape around his neck, mouth and eyes. Babis told police that a gang of men had stormed the home in the early morning hours while everyone was asleep, and a barbaric rampage had ensued. Going off of Babis's timeline of events, the gang had to have been inside the property for around an hour, arriving there after 1.30am. The gang held a gun to Lydia's head, forcing the couple to show them where the money was stashed. Babis directed the gang to the money, gave them what they asked for, and begged them not to hurt his family. But despite the couple's cooperation, Babis said that one of the gang members strangled Caroline with his bare hands, while Babis was tied to the floor, unable to help her. He said after a while he could no longer hear his wife's cries for help, and shortly after this, he lost consciousness and was left for dead. When Babis regained consciousness, he used the small gap in the tape over his eyes to find his phone, and used his nose to dial the last number in his call logs. This number was for one of the couple's neighbours, but because the tape was covering his mouth, all that could be heard on the end of the phone when the neighbour picked up was muffled sounds. The neighbour headed straight over to the house, and once inside, Helped Babis to call the police. (laughs) 
Earlier in the night, that same neighbour recalled hearing Roxy crying, but assumed he must have just been fighting with the cats. When police began their searches of the property, they found that the equivalent of over £10,000 in cash which had been hidden inside a Monopoly box had been taken, along with around £20,000 worth of jewellery. Baba said the money was stashed inside the home as the couple had recently purchased a plot of land and needed to pay some workers. He thought that someone had either tipped this gang off, or someone inside the gang must have had some prior knowledge about this. The cruel, brutal and barbaric nature of the crimes sent shockwaves throughout Greece that soon travelled internationally. The police were just as horrified and commented on how rare crimes like these were in their country. Everyone was outraged and panicked, and the community reached out to offer their support to Babis and the couple's families. Though the couple had cameras all around the house, there was little footage available, as the cameras did not appear to be working or turned on at the time of the robbery and subsequent murder. On an outside camera nearby, they did spot a car driving near to the home around the time frame they were looking at, so at least they had that to look into. Sadly, DNA evidence collected from underneath Caroline's fingernails proved to be inconclusive. There were no witnesses, and no one heard anything, apart from the neighbour that heard Roxy cry. Apart from Babis's account and the camera outside, police had very little to go on. Έχει όσα περισσότερα μπορούσε, μπορούσαμε να μας έρθουν και κάθε μέρα είναι αυτή τη στιγμή είναι 10, 15, 20 άνθρωποι στο δρόμο και ψάχνουν. Αυτό ξέρω είναι κάθε με συνέχεια σε επικοινωνία μαζί μου όσο έχω μπορέσει να τους βοηθήσω. Ε, αν υπάρχει κάποιο που μπορεί να τους βρει θα τους βρουν τα παιδιά αυτά. Ήταν τόσο σκληρή. Ήταν τόσο, δηλαδή δεν καταλάβαιναν από τα παρακάλια σας, από αυτά που τους μα, λέγατε. Παιδιά, μα, τις ηγεσίες σας όλα αυτά τα πράγματα. Παιδιά, μα, μας έδεσαν και από εκείνο το σημείο και μετά δεν τους είχαμε πει ήδη που είναι τα χρήματα. Δεν μπορώ, δεν ξέρω. Όταν συνειδητοποιείς... Εσύ κατάφερες και πήρες τηλέφωνο. Όταν συνειδητοποιείς ότι η γυναίκα σου δεν βρίσκεται σε ζωή. Ε, με, όταν μέλησαν οι αστυνομία. Όταν ήρθαν οι αστυνομία μέσα και μέλησαν και έβγαλαν το, από το κεφάλι μου τα δεσμό. Και η κορούλα. Η κορούλα μου ευτυχώς δεν, δεν έχει χτυπήσει, πήγε στο νοσοκομείο προληπτικά και ευτυχώς είναι καλά. The story spread through the media like wildfire and soon the whole world would be watching to see who would be arrested for these horrendous crimes. The pressure to solve it prompted government officials to announce a reward of 300,000 euros. Three days after Caroline's death, every shop, bar and restaurant on the island of Alanissos closed as its 2,000 residents laid to rest the woman they had adopted as their own. Babis underwent a listening test to identify the language the gang had been speaking. He was able to determine that it was either Albanian or a language from the former USSR. After looking at 150 photographs, he also managed to narrow down the list of suspects to just 10. There was an Albanian gang that had been at the centre of some very violent robberies, often subjecting the victims to torture and beatings. In the six months prior, there had been several similar occurrences in the same area, and the race was on to find anyone linked or previously associated with this gang. Using their knowledge of the gang they were looking for, and Babis's list of suspects, police issued a statement about a specific suspect they were looking for. He was described as strong, around 5 foot 5 inches, with short blonde hair, who was a violent abuser who hates women. Police began investigating a potential link between him and another suspect who had robbed the house of Babis's pilot instructor three years before. The 32-year-old instructor said, They are ruthless. They came to my house around 10 o'clock at night in July. They are not afraid of anything. 
They are brutal and use their strength against women because they consider them weaker. Police said they were also hunting for another suspect named Yanis, who reportedly worked with the gang too. Shortly after Caroline's funeral, a Georgian man had come to the attention of Bulgarian authorities. He was at the border and had a fake passport on him. After taking samples from him, DNA evidence put this man at the scene of another home invasion that happened just 20 minutes away from Caroline's home and just four days before. It was very similar in nature given that both crime scenes were deemed to share the same modus operandi. But just as quickly as he was deemed a suspect in her case, he was ruled out at the same speed, when police could find nothing that tied him to the couple's home. Experts were fearful and said that as more time passed by it was becoming less and less likely that they would ever find the gang responsible. Police sources told the local media that the evidence found at the home was so little it was as if the burglars had bleached the entire house before leaving. Babis was frequently in and out of police interviews as they scrutinised his timeline, trying to get more information. He also told the police everything about the couple and their relationship, but Caroline's diary would soon paint a very different picture. She spoke of an abusive and volatile home, and it turned out that Caroline had been trying to leave Babis for a long time. She first told him she was leaving in July 2020 when Lydia was a newborn. She said she felt miserable and that she was looking for a new home, but she often changed her mind saying she didn't want her daughter to grow up without her parents together. Babis became even more controlling, allegedly installing a tracing app on her phone and accompanying her to her therapy sessions to listen in. The couple's counsellor, Eleni, said Caroline told her she was looking for an apartment in central Athens for her and Lydia, near to a cooking school that she had dreams of attending. Eleni also said that Caroline was terrified of her husband hearing anything outside the room and used to check the doors were shut over and over again. Despite often seeking advice from her counsellor, one day, out of the blue, Eleni received a message from Caroline abruptly asking to end their sessions. Later, it was claimed it was more than likely that this message had actually been sent by Babis. According to Caroline's diary, the pair would fight bitterly and things would often escalate quickly. One diary entry read, Today my little one is a month old. It's also the day I told Babby I want to leave. I feel awful. Another read, I'm thinking of going to my sister. I don't know if I can keep going with Babby. I love him so much that I can't leave him even though this relationship hurts me. It is said that Eleni urged Caroline to confide in her mother, but Caroline said she didn't want to disappoint her. 38 days after the violent scene was discovered, during Caroline's memorial service, Babis was approached by officers, asking him to come in for some more questioning. He begged to stay, but police insisted, stating they had arrested someone and needed Babis to identify him. He asked what's going on, and his reaction is kind of strange and awkward. He told them that the memorial isn't over and asked the officers to let him attend the memorial until the end. They refused to let him and told him for his own good to hide his cell phone and not call anyone and that they have to leave immediately. This was all a ruse. The police were actually taking Babis to the station to interrogate him. His entire story was becoming more and more convoluted and impossible to believe, and holes were appearing everywhere. Alongside Caroline's own words about the toxic relationship and Babis's bewildering story that not a single witness or camera could corroborate, police already knew that they weren't looking for a gang of people. They were looking at just one person. When the data from Caroline's smartwatch was analysed, it showed she was in an extreme state of mental or physical stress for six minutes, around 4am. This revealed that she did not die at the time Babis had originally claimed. Data from his phone 
showed him walking up and down the stairs of the house for hours while he claimed he was tied up and unable to move. After eight hours of intense interrogation and being presented with all the evidence the police had collected, Babis finally broke. This is Babis Ananyastopoulos comforting his mother-in-law this week. Her daughter, his wife, murdered just a few weeks before. But now police say that he was the murderer who nearly concealed his crime. Caroline's murder in May shocked Greece. Her husband describing a violent gang who he said had tied up the parents, threatened their baby child and then killed his wife. In the days after, Anyanya Stopoulos cut a bereaved and broken figure. But police now say that the story about a gang was all a lie, that the husband murdered his wife because she threatened to leave him and that he then staged the crime scene. It's claimed that data from wearable fitness trackers showed that Caroline died hours earlier than her husband said. And also that Anyanya Stopoulos was walking around the house when he claimed to have been tied up. The examination of some evidence, and especially the digital evidence that we had confiscated from the site, gave us some clues, especially the evidence that showed movement of objects, in particular the husband's phone, during the same time he had testified that he was tied up. For weeks, Greece has been shocked by the spectre of a violent, murderous gang. If the police are right, then this horrendous crime instead comes down to the fury of just one man. He admitted that the robbery had been fake and that he had been the one to commit and stage the depraved crimes against Caroline and her beloved dog, Roxy. Police revealed that they had immediately suspected Babis of committing the crime after noticing his demeanour when they arrived at the crime scene on the morning of May 11th. Suspicion loomed from the start, Police Chief Petros Seferis said, but we lacked the hard evidence. Babis had courted the media, misled the police and deceived the world and Caroline's distraught and grieving family. As well as Caroline wanting to dissolve the marriage and leave with Lydia, police wondered if there was another potential motive for the murder. Money. Babis lived a very lavish lifestyle, one people wondered if he could maintain. He and Caroline had recently been on a luxury holiday to Dubai, had spent the equivalent of £47,000 on land, and designed a £140,000 dream home. Just a week before Caroline was killed, Caroline's mum gave Babis €20,000. And sources also revealed that Babis may have been involved in drug smuggling in his helicopter, which was providing him with the money to fund his luxurious life. Caroline's father David does believe there is some foundation to these rumours. He said his daughter had a strong sense of right and wrong, and if she had seen or heard anything about this, she would not have kept quiet. Looking at the timeline of events and the data available, police pieced together what happened that early morning as best they could. At some point in the evening, Caroline had texted a friend, telling them she was leaving Babis. Data from her phone showed that she had tried to book a hotel with her daughter to stay away for the night. At 12.35am, Babis was seen on the living room camera with Lydia, while texting Caroline, who was upstairs. At 1.20am, Babis removed the memory card from the camera inside the property. The couple continued to argue over text for over two hours. At 4am, Caroline's smartwatch suggested she was asleep. Just one minute later, the watch registered intense pulse stimulation. Eleven minutes after this, Caroline's watch detected no further heartbeats. Her pulse rocketed by 50% at 4.05am, as Babis suffocated her with a pillow. Babis then placed Lydia next to her late mother, in an attempt to create a more compelling and shocking crime scene. Caroline had died at a completely different time to that that Babis had reported. This gave him time to stage the robbery by throwing clothes around and pretending to loot the house. At some point, he drowned seven-month-old Roxy and hung his body from the stairs. Two hours later at 6am, Babis made the call to report the fake robbery. A doctor confirmed that Caroline would have died in agony. And police said it was clear from the data on her watch, she had fought for her life with everything she had. In a court appearance, Babis first described smothering Caroline as a hug, 
saying she was trying to move away from him as they lay in bed, so he held her tightly. At one point, as her face was shaking on the pillow, I mean her mouth and her nose were resting on the pillow, I kept holding her in my arms until she stopped rocking, he said. It all lasted about five minutes from the time I hugged her until the moment she stopped rocking. I tried to wake her, rocked her, but it was in vain. Then I realised what had happened. He then said that he threw her down on the bed and pressed her face into the pillow until she passed out, before realising he had killed her. His reason for this, he claimed, was to protect his daughter. He said that Caroline was violent and verbally abusive towards himself and Lydia, and that he had acted in the heat of the moment to save her. I never wanted to lie. I did what I did to evade arrest, to protect my daughter, he said. It was a devastating and hurtful claim for those that knew Caroline to hear. Lydia was Caroline's life, and she worshipped her. She would simply never have acted in any harmful way towards her baby girl. But prosecutors say the killing was absolutely premeditated, pointing to the cameras that Babis had disabled and removed the memory card from before the murder and Caroline's smartwatch data that suggested she was asleep when she was smothered. Babis is charged with two felonies, the first being premeditated murder while in a non-agitated state of mind, the second being abuse of an animal. The two misdemeanours he faces are accusing others of a crime and repeatedly providing false testimonies. One of his lawyers resigned, telling reporters, I do not desire to have anything more to do with the defence of this case, for personal reasons. Babis remains detained in Greece's high-security Korydalos jail, awaiting trial. Sources differ as to the length of sentence he could receive if found guilty, but it has been stated that if the jury is satisfied it was not premeditated, then he could have his sentence drastically reduced. Caroline's death sparked outrage all over the world, but in Greece particularly. It prompted protesters to march the streets, carrying banners reading, No More Domestic Violence. Domestic abuse has quadrupled since the country's first lockdown in March 2020, and Caroline's case seemed to force Greece to confront its problems with violence against women, the attitudes of society, the media, and even senior justice officials. The cases of femicide are usually the result of years of domestic violence that has not been treated and has not been answered in the correct way, said Maria Alvenu, who works as a criminologist, lawyer and women's rights activist. Caroline's grieving parents, Susan and David, wanted to erase Babis in any way they could, starting by removing the word wife from Caroline's gravestone. It now reads mother and daughter. They were also granted full custody of baby Lydia, Babis's parents were denied co-custody, but they were granted visitation rights of five days a month. Sources say that despite everything, Caroline's parents have a cordial relationship with Babis's parents and are working together to do the best thing for Lydia. Caroline Crouch had so much still to accomplish and so many plans for her future before her life was so tragically and brutally cut short. Her baby girl Lydia is now growing up in her late mother's childhood home and David, Caroline's father, said, Lydia is fine, and like her mother, grows more beautiful by the day. She is now walking confidently, eats heartily, and charms everyone she comes into contact with. <laughs>